Hey everybody, this is Mr. MathBlog. This lesson is generating equivalent expressions. So we're going to use properties of equality here. And so this is lesson 7, 8. Don't forget all your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com. Let's go to that site real quick. I haven't done that in a while. So here's MrMathBlog.com. And we're in this sixth grade class. There's two of them. This is the one in California, or at least in my school district. And this is the one that you're probably following right here. So if you click that right there, it'll take you to that link, and it'll be right down below. So here's all the, the chapters 1 through 6 on the left. And then so chapter 7 is going to be right here, and I'm going to upload chapter 8 and all of that stuff. So it'll be right down below here, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with this lesson here. So here's our, our common core strand for our awesome teachers. And our question here is how can we use properties of operation to write equivalent? algebraic expressions okay so equivalent expressions you guys are equal to each other for any values of their variables so for example x plus 5 and 5 plus x are equivalent to each other and so if we just plugged in x equals 3 3 plus 5 equals 8 and 5 plus 3 also equals 8 so here x plus 5 equals 5 plus x so uh, we can use these properties op of operations to write equivalent expressions. So these two expressions are equivalent to each other. They're, they give us equal statements. So properties of addition, you've probably seen these before. The commutative property of addition, I'm sure you remember this, sort of, at least this name. When I drive to work, you guys, I commute to work in my truck. And so, so what happens is, is things commute around the addition sign. So commutative property of addition says the order of the, if the order of the terms change, then the sum stays the same. So here, 15 plus x is equivalent to x plus 15. And see this 15 and this x, they are commuting, they are driving to work, they are commuting around this addition sign. So it becomes x plus 15. They just switch places, okay? The associative property, you guys, the associative property is always when they use the parentheses, okay? Associative property of addition is when the grouping of the terms change, the sum stays the same. So this always, associative property is always dealing with parentheses. So 4 plus, and then remember parentheses we do first, 6 plus y would give us an equivalent statement if we added the 4 plus 6 first and then added the y. And 4 plus 6 is 10, and 10 plus a number is really easy. It gives us a nice compatible number. So, And then what's called the identity property. This one's forgotten a lot, you guys. The identity property just says the sum of 0 and any number is just that number. So 0 plus z equals just z. 0 plus my coffee cup equals my coffee cup. So, And then we have properties of multiplication. Okay, so well, they're the same, you guys. Commutative property of multiplication. Remember, when I drive to work, I commute to work. So when you're multiplying numbers, if the order of the factors change, the product stays the same. So a times 8 equals, I'm sorry, 8 times a equals a times 8. See how they're commuting around the multiplication sign? So commutative property of multiplication. Then we have associative property of multiplication. Remember, associative property deals with the parentheses. So when the grouping of the factors change, then the product stays the same. So remember, associative property is dealing with parentheses. So here it says 5 times the quantity 20 times b. Well, it's going to give us the same product if we multiply the numbers first, 5 times 20 which is 100, a nice easy number to multiply with, 100 times b, okay? And then the identity property of multiplication uh, is when you multiply by 1, then the num it's just that number right there. So any number times 1 just equals that number at the identity property, okay? So here's an example. Roberto ate two cookies. I love cookies. Drank three glasses of milk and ate five more cookies. He's my kind of guy. So the expression 2 plus 3g plus 5 represents the total amount Roberto had where g is the size of one glass of milk. So write an equivalent expression with only two, two terms. Okay, some of you guys can do this pretty easy, but let's just follow what the book is asking us here. So we're going to rewrite the expression with only two terms, okay? So the like terms, remember from the last lesson, the like terms are the numbers here, okay? They don't have letters with them. They don't have variables with them. So the like terms are, are 2 and 5, okay? So what we're going to do is uh, use the, uh, looks like, 
2 plus 3g plus 5 all of a sudden becomes 3g plus, there's no parentheses, so this one would be the commutative property of addition. And what we're going to do is we're going to commute the 2 and the 3g around this addition sign. So 3g plus 2 goes right here. Okay, so we just use the commutative property of addition. Okay, all right, so now we're going to use the blank property. Okay, now here all of a sudden they give us parentheses, so that's going to be, that's code word associative property okay so now we're going to go ahead and associate the two and the five our like terms okay so we're going to group our like terms together and now we're going to go ahead and add two plus five two plus five gives us seven so there's two terms right there three g plus seven we combined like terms right there okay so an equivalent expression for the total amount that roberto had is three g plus seven okay all right, so that leads us into the distributive property, and you guys have done this before. So multiplying a sum by a number is the same as multiplying each, no, each, uh, each term in that sum by the number and then adding them together. And you're thinking, what? Okay, so here's multiplying this sum, sum means addition, this sum by a number. It's the same as multiplying each term by this number, so 5 times h, and then we're going to go ahead and add them together, and then 5 times 7. Now, I noticed your textbook doesn't do these little arrows. I do that in my class just so that kids see what I'm doing. Most uh, students, if they make a mistake, they forget the 5 times 7 part right there, okay? All right, and this also works with uh, subtraction, the distributive property with subtraction. So 3 times 11 minus p is 3 times 11 minus 3 times p, so whatever that stuff would be, okay? So this would be 33 minus 3p right there, okay? And this one up here would be 5h plus uh, 35, okay? All right, so let's use properties of operation to write an expression equivalent to 5a plus 8a minus 16 by combining like terms, all right? So we're going to go ahead and use the commutative property of multiplication. And remember, when I drive to work, I commute to work. So this 5 times a is going to be commuted around and made a times 5. Similarly, 8 times a is going to be commuted around because that means 8a is 8 times a, so we're going to make it a times 8, okay? You'll see why in just a second. We're going to be using the distributive property here right now. Okay, so use the distributive property to rewrite a times 5 plus a times 8, okay? So a is the outside number, and then inside number is going to be 5 plus 8, so it's going to become a times 5 plus 8, okay? So we already have the times 5 plus 8 right here, so let's put our a right there. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and add within the parentheses, so 5 plus 8 gives us 13, okay, and then we'll go ahead and use the commutative property of multiplication, so these guys, here's my multiplication, we're going to commute these guys around, so instead of a times 13, it's going to be 13 times a, or just 13a, remember 13a is 13 times a, so that expression 13a minus 16 is going to be equivalent to 5a plus 8a minus 16, all right? Some of you guys can probably go from here to here. We're just following what the book is suggesting right here. So what the book is trying to make sense with is we're using the commutative property of multiplication, the distributive property, and then again, the commutative property of multiplication. Did I say, yeah. So that's, gonna, that's why we get it, because of our properties of equality right there, okay? So here we go. We're going to use the distributive property to write an equivalent statement, okay? So, so 6 parentheses y plus 7, okay? So when one factor is a product in parentheses, we can leave out the multiplication sign. So 6 times quantity y plus 7 is the same as 6 times y plus 7. It's understood when there's nothing there. It's understood to be multiply. Okay, so let's distribute 6 times y is going to be 6 um, uh, six times y, and then 6 times 7 right there, okay? See how we distributed that 6 through the parentheses? All right, so now we're going to go ahead and multiply this 6 times 7, 6 times 7. Well, if you don't know, 3 times 7 is 21, so 6 times 7 is double that, so 42. All right, so the expression 6y plus 42 is equivalent to 6 quantity y plus 7. All right. Okay, how about this one? We're going to do the reverse distributive property. And how we do this is we find the GCF. Okay, so what's the GCF? What's the biggest number that goes into 12 and 8? Okay, the GCF of 12 and 8 is 4. 2 goes into it, but 4 is bigger. It's the biggest number right there. Okay, so we're going to write the first term, 12a, as the product of the GCF and a number ter another term, okay, another factor. 
So 12a is, well, 12 is equal to this number times 3. 12 is equal to 4 times 3. So 12a is going to be equal to um, uh, 4 times 3a right there, okay? All right, so now we're going to do the same thing with the 8b. 8 times 4, I'm sorry, 4 times 2 equals 8. So uh, 4 times 2b will equal 8b. So we're going to go ahead and put a 2b right there. And now we're going to use the reverse distributive property. See, they both have a 4 in it. So we're going to go ahead and pull the 4 out. And it's going to become inside of the parentheses this term plus this term right there. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so let's pull the 4 out. So it's going to be uh, 3a plus 2b. Well, we already have the 2b in there, so we're, we're missing the 3a right there. So uh, the expression, now we don't need to have that multiplication symbol there, so we'll just write it as 4 parentheses 3a plus 2b is going to be equivalent to 12a plus 8b. And if you're wondering, oh, what happened here? Just imagine if we redistributed 4 times 3a is 12a, 4 times 2b is 8b. So what we did is we pulled the GCF out, the 4 out. All right, so let's give a different expression that's equivalent to 12a plus b and explain what property we use. Well, we could have pulled out a 2. It wouldn't have been the GCF, but it would have been a 2, a factor. Okay, and when we pull a 2 out, a 2 goes into 12a 6 times, 6a times, and 2 goes into 4, um, I'm sorry, I'm thinking ahead, 8b, 4b times. So if we pull a 2 out, we get 2 times 6a plus 2 times 4b. And then using our distributive property, it becomes 2 times this 6a plus the 4b right there. Okay, and if we think, imagine if we redistributed 2 times 6a is going to give us 12a. 2 times 4b is going to give us 8b. So this is an equivalent statement. We can also uh, use the commutative property of um, uh, addition and just switch them around. Instead of 12a plus 8b, we could have made it 8b plus 12a. All right, you guys. All right. Hope that makes sense and take care.